three stocks at 52 week lows. 52 week lows are a great place to start looking for investment ideas. Now, if you look at Nike, it's at $92 and 30 cents. And right down here, 52 week low, 88.66. Here's interesting, all time high, almost 180, three, almost three years ago, two and a half or three years ago. Guys, this is Nike. Incredible company at 180, got as low as $79, $88 per share in the last year. That's, that's over a 50% fall from the all-time high. This is incredibly important for you to understand as an investor. Guys, what we're trying to do on this channel is to attract learners who want to learn about investing, not lemmings who just want to be told, go buy this. There are plenty of other garbage channels out there for that. What we're trying to do is sit there and teach a process. This process is to say... A company like Nike fell over 50% from its all-time high. Who here would sit there and question that Nike is not an incredible company? Guys, this company has dominated the world for the last 40-some years. They have some of the biggest names in all of sports, and it fell over 50% from its all-time high. Again, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a great buy, but you look here and look at momentum and think to yourself, oh, maybe people are shifting on Nike. Guys, $141 billion market cap. Remember, this is $300 billion just two and a half years ago. Enterprise value of 153. This difference of 12 billion is essentially their debt, their net debt after offsetting cash, et cetera. Now, free cash flow last year, 6.2 billion. So guys, their essential net debt is two years of their free cash flow. That's incredible. Their five-year free cash flow is four and a half billion. Also incredible and growing. So three years of their five-year free cash flow. Guys, I love everything about this company. I love Nike. I want to buy it. I look at the eight pillars here. And the question is, is 28 times earnings in the last five years and is 31 times five-year free cash flow too much? They haven't bought back a ton of shares, which is okay because they were expensive. Now, as they get cheaper and cheaper, I'm hoping they do buy back shares. If the, com if the company fell in half tomorrow, I'd say stop this dividend, even though it'd be 3% at that point. Stop it and use every dollar extra to buy back shares. That's what I'd want Nike doing. Now, if you're watching this video because you've owned Nike and you bought it near the top and you're getting a little anxious and scared, I don't blame you. We've all been there. Even when I buy a company based on fundamentals, if it falls in half, I got to sit there and say, wait a second, what am I doing here? Is this right or am I wrong? Peter Lynch has said, guys, I bought stocks at 12, then went to two and then went to 50. But the same token, you got to take advantage of that irrationality on the downside. I want you to be the kind of investor who takes advantage of these three companies that are falling in price. And maybe they're, you got to root for them even further. But I look at Nike going, great brand, great company, reasonable debt. It's just about what's the right price. Let's see what analysts say about Nike here. 362 per share in profit this year, going to 633. That's double digit growth. Boy. Double-digit growth every year for a company that's fallen over by almost in half as of right now. That's pretty incredible if you ask me. Now, what about their revenue? Actually, not bad here. Besides this year, we're looking at 6, 7.5, 10.5, So some pretty reasonable revenue growth for such a worldwide incredible brand. Now, obviously, you're on here watching videos to hopefully learn how to beat the market. Beating the market is very difficult, but... If you weren't trying to beat the market, you just buy a, a, a low-cost ETF and stick with it. You, it's hard to do this, guys, because the emotional part of investing is something I really focus on as part of our process. The hard thing to do here is sit there and say, I bought Nike near 180. What do I do here? Even if you bought it at 120, what do I do here? It's easy to say when a stock is going up that you would buy it as it falls. But remember, story follows the stock price. So as the stock starts to fall, the news will come out and you'll get berated with bad news. And guess what's that gonna do? That's gonna make your stomach hurt. It's gonna make you feel anxious and wonder if you made the wrong decision. Everybody has the brain power, as Peter Lynch says, to buy stocks, but not many people have the stomach. It takes that stomach in order to beat the market. Anybody can do well in a bull market. Who can do great in a bear market and continue to buy beaten down shares at better prices? So, if you want to get better in touch with your emotions, join our community of thousands of like-minded investors who are there to help each other handle the emotions of investing. I absolutely am convinced that those people who do so will do better in the markets. So click the link below. It's only $7 for seven days to try it out. $1 per day. It's the best investment you can make for yourself. 
go check it out and say hi to me in the community. So let's go see what we think Nike may be worth based on our stock analyzer tool. Let's pull up the last time I did it. Now remember guys, for Nike, incredible company, I absolutely want to pay a premium for this company. The question is, what's the right premium? And that's going to differ for every single person. That's why investing is an art. So on Nike, I did revenue growth of 3 5 and 7% over the next 10 years. Now remember, if you have our software, you can do up to 20 years on this. Profit margin, I did 10, 11, and 12. Now the reason I went a little bit higher on this middle point for me Nike's doing more direct to consumer sales. That's going to be higher margin. You know, when you sell to a retailer, you got to give them a wholesale price. But when you sell direct to end consumer, I have to think this profit margin and free cash flow margin should increase. So I also match the free cash flow with the profit margin here over the next 10 years. Now, what's the right PE and price to free cash flow 10 years from now for Nike? Guys, I chose 20, 23, and 26. The historical average for the market is 15. That does not apply to Nike. Nike is not the average company. Nike is a high quality business with staying power. That deserves a premium. How much? Guys, if you told me 25 or 30, I could see the argument for that. I'm not saying it's correct. If you told me 15, I would probably disagree with you. But if you told me 18, I'm like, okay, it's a 20% premium to the market. That's the art of investing. I don't know what the right number is for you. That's why this tool is so important for you, for those who have it, because it allows you to make those modifications yourself. Now, finally, desired return. For purposes of these videos, I always put 9% because the market return is about 9 or 10%. So I put 9% in here just to say, what's my actual value of the company? But remember, if you're going to buy a company and get 9%, just buy the market. Just buy an S&P 500 ETF. No reason to buy an individual company. So for you out there, when you're doing this, put in your margin of safety by having a higher desired return. And I hit the analyze button. The stock's currently at 92. And my values are a low price of 60, high price of 120, a middle price of 85. And it's currently my watch list at 85. It's at 92 bucks right now. So it's got a little bit of work to do, but it's getting on its way there. Stock number two, Lululemon. Guys, another amazing brand. Now, the difference with Lululemon versus Nike is, Nike's been around for a gajillion years. Lululemon has not. Is Lululemon a fad? I don't know. I look at the stock price, 516 all-time high, just back in December, right at the beginning of the year, 52-week low, 326 back in June, and it's already getting pretty close to that right now. We're at 329, call it 330 per share right now, down 1.5% today in an up market. Now, $42 billion market cap, $42 billion enterprise value. Very little slash no debt. I love that. And it's free cash flow last year of $1.65 billion. So guys, so far, great balance sheet. Let's look at the growth of Lululemon over the last 10 years. Look at this revenue growth. 1.8, 2, 2.3, 2.6, 3.3, $4 billion, 4.4, 6.3, 8.1, 9.6. Eight pillars, just like Nike. Five-year PE of 45, five-year price of free cash flow of 53. Lulu, I have a question for you. Growing business, why are you buying back shares? Please don't. Please stop that. Luckily, they don't pay a dividend. High returns on invested capital. The question is, is this a fad or is it something that's more permanent? I don't know. Let's look at analyst estimates. Look at this. Amazing growth. 1270 EPS to $26 double-digit growth all the way around, according to analysts. Now, of course, we don't know if that's actually going to happen or not, but it's something to look at and consider. Revenue growth, double-digit pretty much all along the way for the next five or six years. 20%, 14, 12, 10, 10, 10. Big-time revenue growth from $9.8 billion to $16.7 billion in the next five or six years. So let's go check out Stock Analyzer tool. Let's pull up the last time we did Lulu. And 10-year of analysis, I did 6, 9, and 12%. Might be a little aggressive. I'm going to change that to 5, 8, and 11%. Profit margin, I did 12, 13, and a half, and 15. That might be low. Because as you can see, their profit margin is increasing. And as they get bigger and bigger, I imagine that profit margin will, will probably increase along with it. So I might change this to 12, 14, and 16%. 
And I'm actually gonna make the free cash flow the exact same thing. Now for PE, I put a little margin of safety here of 13, 15, and 17%. I'm gonna change this to 15, 18, and 21. And I'm gonna put, and I'm gonna put my 9% return for my desired return. Same thing though, guys. This is for you to modify. Do I think that Lulu is going to fall to the wayside? Remember, at least, uh, women love nice things. They love their nice gear. And that's what's important here. And again, this is the emotion. And when you sit here and look at Lulu's fall in the price, you got to wonder yourself, is this company going away? I don't think it's going away. Do I think 10 years from now that Lulu will still be around? I do. Unless they got bought out by somebody. If the stock price gets so cheap. But as an investor, what's very important for you is to sit there and say, okay, every investment's the present value of all future cash flow. I have to sit there and figure out a way to determine some sort of cash flow. That's what this is for. But then you have to couple that with the hardest part of investing, the emotional side. What happens when the stock continues to fall? What happens when there's a downturn in the economy? These luxury goods will take a hit in all likelihood. How much of a hit? I don't know. But you have to be able to sit there and say, it's temporary. Let me sit there and either reevaluate and buy some more or reevaluate and sell your position. Most times, reevaluating and buying more on top quality companies that are growing is the right way to do it. And it's easy to say that before the fall happens. But after the fall, it is very difficult to see a stock continue to go down and you keep buying the shares. I don't care who you are, it's difficult. So I hit the analyze button on Lulu. And again, no margin of safety here. I have a low price of 160, high price of 430, a middle price of 260. So for me, I'm still going to wait. I have my, my, my uh, watch list at 200. Seems about right. So we'll reevaluate when the stock hits 200. Stock number three. Now this one is a stock I used to own, but I sold it. And the reason I sold it was I didn't like the debt. And the stock keeps falling. Look at this dividend yield though. That's very attractive. 10.7%. It eats up $1.66 billion of their $2.5 billion free cash flow average the last five years. But last year, they lost $1.8 billion in free cash flow. Guys, I don't know what to say here. This one's a tough one for me, and I'm really glad I got out of Walgreens for me personally. It didn't fit my long-term criteria. The return on invested capital is absolute garbage. Could I be selling a company that has a great turnaround financially? Maybe so. But look at this, guys. Look at its Look at its eight pillars here. It is selling for 17.7 times its five-year free cash flow. That's a lot. That's tough for me. Net income's down 9.5 billion. Free cash flow is down 7 billion. You've got just a lot of tough things going on here. But the price of free cash flow over the last five years is great. For me personally, guys, I look at this and I immediately think to myself, I'm moving on. So guys, if you want to talk to me about any one of these companies, join the community, click the link below. I will see you on the other side.